else. <laughs> it's not much better, but I want you guys to look at it. Um, tell me about your reaction when you walked in the room. It's well, to take your breath away. Well, all the years we've spent here, and it's amazing how much it is the same. It's been well cared for. Little bits and pieces, and there are some minor changes. The carpeting on the floor is a change, and the sound system is a little different. But everything else is the same. We built this in, we built it. We had it done, and we were contributing and designed the thing in 60, late 60 and 61 while they were building it. And we built the coral room to our specs, the things that we wanted. One of one large um, rehearsal room for small ensembles off the main room, and then at least two small practice rooms. So we had all that. It's, a, it's an outstanding choral room. It's probably one of the best around, especially when you look at the size of it. It's much larger than a lot of choral rehearsal rooms. It's ideal, has space for for taking care of music, music library, wonderful sound system, everything that you need. You seem to not be in fond, too fond of the carpet they put down there. No, I, I wouldn't put, put carpet. Carpet makes it too dead for me. But it's up to the director that has it. And if he likes carpet and wants it to be a little softer sound and not have the reverb, then this is what you do. They put carpet originally in Libby Gardner Hall but they took it out. And they had carpeting in the choir loft in the tabernacle, and we took it out and had hard surfaces put on all the floors. And this carpet, for me, absorbs too much of the sound. It doesn't give you any ambience. But it, it makes your people listen more carefully, too. So there are advantages and disadvantages. How long has it been since you've been in this room? Oh, I've been in the room two or three times uh, in the last four or five years. I've just come up and looked around and talked to the director and took it, taken a look to see how things were, but uh, not as a teacher since 1970, which would be almost 40 years. Um, it's no secret to you the name Don Ripplinger rings a lot of bells for people after years with the choir. Well, when you when you have as many students over the years as we have had, uh, if you add them up, the single enrollments through the 17 years we taught in public schools, it's between 12 and 14,000. And that word gets out <laughs> for good or for ill, either, either one. And then you've got the, the, your years with the Tabernacle Choir. Yeah, the 21 years with Tabernacle Choir. So, so you're well known is my point. Well, yes, probably, and it's one of those things that it does a lot more for you than you do for it. I, uh, I bring that up only because uh, you know, a lot of people are envious of, of the opportunity to work with the choir. I mean, everybody would like well, to sing in the choir, but... That's a rare opportunity. It is. Um, and I don't mean to weigh the choir, the Tabernacle Choir versus the Skyline Choir, uh, but would it be too much of me to ask you which means the most to you? Oh. If you were to, to base your opinion on what you see happening to students and the growth you see in them and the maturity that you see and the love for music that you see and their understanding of what life's all about and the changes that they make in their lives during the time that you know them as contrasted to a group of adults who have already passed through that period. Uh, the, the years in junior high and senior high school have to be more rewarding in that regard. Uh, so, but having a group like the Tabernacle Choir who can do anything that you ask them to do and do it in a minimum amount of time with the spirit and understanding, musicality, the vocal ability that they have, it's, you don't compare them, you can't. You can't compare them. But the years that we spent here are, are just 
just memorable, that's all. Great kids, wonderful kids who lived in this area and their parents, supportive, hardworking. They wanted to do the best they could and they did. They were great years. Here in Olympus Junior, both. We were at Olympus Junior for eight years and Skyline for eight. Great school. Another unfair question. Are there names among those students, those 14,000 students that pop out immediately? Oh, always. And it's interesting how many of the thousands that you had that you remember, you remember their names. Uh, when I see them, I almost have to ask them to tell me their name because they change. They're older and they're more mature. They figured I was an old man when I had their classes here, but they were young. They were 16, 17, 18 year olds. And they change. They change dramatically. I see them 10, 15, 20 years later, but the names stick out. I mean, I remember Paul Marcosian, who was the president of the choir in 69. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other officers, Ellen Ellsworth, and oh, I, I'm sorry, I'd have to <laughs> go back and look. But the names uh, always ring a bell. And you remember them, you remember the, the students, and you see the things they've accomplished in the years that they have been gone, the things that they've achieved in preparing themselves to take care of their own families and what they do. And it's a, it's a whole different life. You watch the accomplishments of these young people. And you know they're going to accomplish great things. I, I, think, I think Jim Youngberg was in, in this 69 group. Uh, I remember he walked in one day after he had taken the ACT. And he was quite upset because he didn't get a perfect score. <laughs> I, think, I think, well, OK. But he, I think he got a 35, but he may have taken it again and gotten a 36, as I remember. But no, they're great mem memories. How could you have asked for any greater opportunities in your life than to work with these young people that we did over these years? When, um, if I could try and jog your memory about an incident, an episode, a, an anecdote, uh, during that era, it doesn't have to be 69, can you think of Anything fun or poignant that happened in this room? Oh, all kinds of things. Um, the full pause that I would make trying to say something and it would come out wrong. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. I can't think of anything in particular. But it, it, just, just the memories of working with all of these young people. Um. You recorded an album, more than one album here, or just one? Well, every album that the choir made. Every choir made an album, starting in 63, 63. We made an album every year. Would it be 63, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 70? Why did you make the album? For uh, the young people to have, the members of the choir to have. Would you do me a favor? They aren't going to hear my questions on the tape. So kind of repeat the question. Yeah. Why did we make an album? So that each of the choir members could have an album and on it have at least a recording of a number of the pieces that we did and the things that were their favorites and memories of Skyline and their years at Skyline in the choir so they could each have that. And I have at least one recording of every one of the years I keep them. My daughter Jane took a couple of them and put them on CD. And I really probably ought to transcribe all of them on the CD. It's fun for me to go back and listen to those recordings that we made and the things that we did. Um, every year was different in terms of of what the choir accomplished and, and the things that they did, and the, the development of their voices. They were all, they all had their own personality, every one of them. But that, that's a real remembrance to have. My wife has one, obviously. Yes, she would have, Linda would have 1969. She had 70. 1970, she would have the last one. That is correct, she would that's have. the last one, wasn't it? That was the last one. 
And that was interesting on this, well, with all of them. But with the madrigals, I remember we just set up one microphone, and they all sat around in a circle right over here, and we just sang one song after another and recorded all of those. I think we made the recording with the choir and with the madrigals in about an hour and a half, the whole thing. We didn't repeat anything. We didn't do any retakes. We just did it. And that, that pretty well shows the, the, the quality and the professionalism that they had and developed over that period of that year and what they were able to do. I know you had reasons for leaving Skyline to go on and pursue your career. Um, undoubtedly, there were some tender feelings when you left. Oh, I'll say. Would you mind telling me some of those, how you felt? What well, man? leaving Skyline after being here for those eight years and achieving what we did in terms of, of the quality of the choirs that came through during that period of time. That was hard to leave. It was hard to leave the young people in this area. It was hard to step out of what had become a very prestigious position in the music education circles, choral music circles, throughout the state or throughout the area. To leave that, um, that was hard to do. That was not an easy thing. Our children were all involved. Uh, they would wait almost every year. They would could hardly wait till Christmas time when the choir would come down and sing and come into the house and and they would sit around for an hour singing all different Christmas carols and eating donuts or whatever we had. And those experiences, uh, our own children miss those. They they still talk about those, but. You can't be in a situation like this for that many years, meeting with that many talented and, and wonderful young people and not miss it. And moving from here into a university level teaching um, was really quite different in terms of your openness of time. You aren't there seven periods a day and in the morning and at night. and all of that time in, in university, you may have a heavy schedule one day and then very little for a day or two and then a heavy schedule for the next day. So your time is, is more your own in terms of how you can allot the hours of the day. So university teaching is really quite different. But as far as having a choir at the university level, the students are more mature vocally and they are more mature in terms of their outlook and what they expect and what they want and what they're willing to do. And sometimes they, they aren't as excited or willing to, to do what needs to be done as I found high school kids were. But each age has its own advantages. I've got plenty of material. Anything you wished I would have asked? No. <laughs> It, I, I just have to stop and think of the years that we spent here and of the years that we spent at Olympus Junior and the impact that that experience had on us as a family, upon me personally, upon my wife and our children. Uh, they still talk about the, the choirs and the experiences they had and they had their association with the kids here and at Olympus Junior, even though none of our children went to Skyline or Olympus Junior. They all went to other schools, but they always knew about what was going on here. I bet they did. Good. Okay. You're a, you're a good talking head. As we yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take a couple of setup shots, so if you just... Randy's mouth is flapping and you nod your head. Oh, don't look over here. Look here. Oh, do you want me to <laughs> yeah, just, say something as if you were talking to just, me? Just nod as though I was talking to you. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> yep.
chairs were all the same. These are the same chairs that we had, I think. They've been here all those years. Those are the same music slots that they kept their music in. Everything, except for those little changes, the sound system has changed, it's different. Carpeting, but practice rooms are the same. But the room is accessible, very same. Okay, well, I'll see you later. Okay. Done? Keep going. Okay. Thanks, Don. Yeah. Bye.
Crud. <laughs>